Welcome back to the New Jersey State Museum's Ask the Experts Video Learning Library, where we're digging into some of the most common questions people ask paleontologists about what we do and how we do it. So far, we've shown you how and where we find the fossils, and how to be sure that they really are fossils, and not just some rocks or bones from modern animals. Now that we've found a really good site, how do we get those bones out of the ground safely? What kind of tools do we use? Well, let's dig into those questions right now. It's time to get our hands dirty. Here we've got a site with definite fossil in the ground, but now what? Well, we can't just start blasting away with picks and shovels because we don't know yet how many bones are in this area or how far spread out they might be. So that's what we have to figure out next. The idea here is to gently expose only enough of the bones to give us a good idea of exactly where they are and to get a better idea of just how big the area is that we'll be excavating. This is a delicate process. We're just using a few small tools that let us get the job done in a slow and methodical way. Tools like knives, screwdrivers, awls, and even small soft paintbrushes. And we don't want to completely uncover the bones either. The rock actually helps to protect the fossils throughout the excavation process and while transporting them back to the lab. With the fossils now exposed, we can begin to map them as they're laying in the ground and start planning the actual excavation. We have to start thinking about things like which bones should come out first, other hazards that may affect the process, and even where to put the excess dirt. Mapping the bones and taking other field notes is always a very important process. Those maps and notes can be a huge help to us later on in the lab when we're trying to clean the bones and put them back together. And just as importantly, all of this information can help us to learn so much more about this animal and its life. We can learn about things like how the animal died and how it lived. Did it live in herds or did it live most of the year alone? What did it eat? Did it live in a desert or in a tropical environment? Notes we take now about the bones, how they're lying, and the rocks surrounding them can help us answer these questions and so much more. Now that we know exactly where the bones are on the ground, we've mapped them and we've taken all the notes that we need, it's finally time to start the excavation process. But we better start digging into that next time. For now, thanks for joining us and as always, keep digging.